Hello everyone, the iPhone 15 Pro has just officially came out, so it's a great iPhone, I love this iPhone a lot, and I'll give you a quick breakdown on exactly how to use this particular iPhone. If you've purchased it, you made a great decision, it's going to last you for many, many years, but the first thing I'd recommend doing is probably putting a screen protector or a case on your iPhone. You can go to Walmart or Best Buy or Amazon and purchase any of the cases or screen protectors. I'm telling you, even like a $1 case or $1 screen protector is going to be better for you than not having one at all. So I'd recommend just doing that. That's like the very first thing I'd recommend doing. Now on the outside of this device, there's a few things to kind of look over. So on the front, you have a 6.1 inch Super Retina XR OLED display. It's 120 Hertz. If you don't know anything about that, I'll explain that later, but it's a very good panel. You have the dynamic island at the very top, which is very cool. It's one of those things that makes the iPhone look that much better. It's basically, if you don't know, it's like that little like dynamic, it's like an island in the display, which is really cool. It's also where the front camera is. On the sides, there's not really too much craziness going on here. This is now a titanium iPhone, which is good, and it has its you know features that has its you know disadvantages as well. You kind of tell there's already some discoloration going on with the buttons, but regardless, it's a very good, well-built iPhone. On the top, there really isn't anything, but you do have the volume buttons here. We now have this new action button, so there's no longer a mute switch. You can actually customize this for other actions, which I'll explain in the settings. On the bottom, or actually on the side first, we have a side button, our power button right here. Nothing crazy, just a standard button that we can invoke Siri with. We do have our, like, I think these were 5G or other antenna band right here. No SIM card tray on these iPhones, like just like last year. On the back, we on the bottom, we do have our USB-C port, which is awesome. So this is essentially where you can charge your iPhone, one of the ways you can charge your iPhone. It's very cool. I'm very, very happy that we have USB-C now. It's been a long time coming, but we do have it, which is really cool. You can plug in accessories, you can charge your iPhone here, plug in docks, lots and lots of type of capability here, which is really cool. So you, we now have that type of capability on our iPhones, which is so nice. On the back of our iPhone 15 Pro, Pro Max, whatever one you have, we have a triple camera setup, which is massive. Very good type of camera. I'm very happy that we have that type of capability. We have MagSafe capability, which if you don't know, allows us to use certain MagSafe accessories. We have wireless charging. We have IP certification, so our iPhone is fairly you know, robust if it's around water or something. It's probably not going to break. And that is kind of it. That's pretty much what we're working with with our iPhone 15 Pro on the outside. Now, turning this bad boy on, you basically have that lock screen. So within our lock screen on iOS 17, we now have a few more customizing you know, abilities that we have. So for one, you can tap on the display, you can turn it on, you can click the power button. On the top, we have our time. We have our date right there. That dynamic island is there on the right side of the island. We did. We have our you know, SOS mode. We don't have a signal or anything like that. We have our Wi-Fi and battery icon. On the top left, we do actually essentially have our you know little ringer switch. So far, we're on mute mode or whatever. If we have a T-Mobile, AT&T, that should come up right there too. On the center here, we essentially just have standard documentation, standard notifications. So if we ever get any notifications, those things will come up right here. Now you can see I do not have any notifications, but if I did, they would essentially show up right here in the middle. And that's another cool thing. Now, if we swipe to the left side, we basically will get into our little like widget panel. So you can see all sorts of other widgets that we have inside of our iPhone. If we swipe to the, if we actually click on this icon on the bottom, you can see that we actually en enable the flashlight, which is really cool. If we click on the right side, you'll basically come into the camera. If you swipe up a little bit from the bottom, you'll basically come back into your lock screen. You can also swipe to the right to get into the camera too. So those are just some cool things within the lock screen. Now swiping up, you get into your home screen. So your home screen is basically where you're always going to come, as you're always going to come home. <laughs> That's kind of one way to put it. So this top stuff will basically stay the same. You'll have the same type of icons as before. This middle icon here, so from the top basically to the bottom until the dock, you basically have the same type of thing. So if you're swiping through, you'll see all your app icons. If you used an iPhone before, then you pretty much know how this works. But that is one thing that is kind of a big thing to keep in mind is that you're always going to come back to your home screen. Now you can hold down on your icons if you want to move them around. So if I wanted to, if I wanted to move my maps icon out of this, I can hold down on the maps icon here and I can move it to a different panel or a different side. So here I can just bring it here and I can drop this icon here. I can also hold it down and bring it over another icon to make a folder. I can also delete applications by clicking on that little minus button next to that little app icon. I can go and click on delete app. I can remove from home screen or I can cancel. If you remove this app from your home screen, that means it's going to be removed from here, but it's going to show up all the way at the end in your app library. The app library is where all your applications are. If you swipe down from the top, you'll see a list of every single application you have inside of your iPhone. 
So this is something that's really cool because you can just see all the apps that you have inside of your device and it's a really, really cool thing. Now swiping back out, you'll see that the dock is always persistent. So you can also drag and drop applications into your dock if you want to. If you really care about it, you can do that. If not, then you don't have to do it. It doesn't really matter. But you have that type of capability here too. And that is that. Now you can click on the search bar here if you want to to quickly get into spotlight search or you can swipe down if you are looking for an application or a file or anything like that within your whole entire iPhone, you should be able to see that within your Spotlight Search application. Now, another thing to keep in mind is with gestures. So if we make our way over to like our health application, right? And let's say we come back home and we want to go back to our home screen. How do we do that? Well, we basically do that by swiping up from the bottom and you'll basically see that we're now back home. But let's say we're in another application and we want to actually get into the application we were just in. Do you have to go back home every time and click on it? Nope, you can swipe up from the bottom just like this. So you don't wanna swipe up all the way like I did before. You're gonna swipe up and stop like halfway through right here. And you'll see a complete list of all the other applications that you have inside of your device. So if I want to, I can just go ahead and go straight inside of my health app if I want to right here. I can go back into multitasking, go into another app like this. Or what I can do is I can just swipe in between the applications just like this. So if I drag that little bar at the bottom, I can swipe between these apps just like this. It's actually a really cool thing, super basic, but that's basically how you do it from that perspective. And you can swipe up just like so. Now you don't have to do this every time, but if you come back into your multitasking panel, you can just go ahead and just swipe out of these applications and kind of remove them from the background. If an app's being annoying or if it's not working right, you can do that, just swipe it out and reopen it. And that might end up fixing the problem for some people. So that is another big thing to keep in mind. Now with the buttons on the side, if you want to completely just shut down your iPhone, you can go ahead and hold down a few buttons. So you know we have the action button, and we'll talk about that in a second. The volume up button, volume down button if you want to decrease or increase volume. You also have the power button here if you just want to quickly go ahead and just kind of you know power out down your iPhone. You can do that right there. But what you can also do is if you want to completely shut down your iPhone, you can hold down the power button and the volume up button at the same time. And you should be able to slide the power off. And that's an option that you have there too. You can just completely slide the power off your iPhone. That's another very, very basic thing that you can do. On top of that, another thing you can do is that, you know, if you want to, I'll show you in the settings how to do it a different way but that is another thing you can do. Now, if you swipe down from the top left corner, you can see you'll come back into a panel that looks just like your lock screen. If you wanna look for notifications and stuff, you can see that here. If you swipe down from the top right portion, you'll come into your control center. This is where a lot of stuff is housed. So for one, if you wanna to quickly toggle on or off Bluetooth or Wi-Fi or cell or turn on airplane mode, you have that option here. Also long press on that icon to actually come into this panel, which is very cool. What you can also do is if you're playing a song or a video or something like that, you'll basically be able to see that song or video here and you can play or unplay it depending on what you want to do. If you want to enable auto rotate, you can do that here. If you want to disable or enable mute, you can just do that here too, your silent or unsilent mode on the pro iPhones. If you want to enable your do not disturb mode, you can do that by holding down here and enabling it there. If you want to increase or decrease your brightness, you can do that by coming here. So you can increase or decrease this or your sound at the same time. And you can just do that. So you can increase or decrease your sound depending on what you want to do. And that's another option you have. Here you can have the ability of turning on your flashlight, your all this other stuff, your calculator, camera, so many other things here too. So that's another option that you have here as well, which is really awesome. Swapping back up, if you want to make phone calls, you can do that within the phone call application. If you want to send iMessages, you can do that within the iMessage app. FaceTimes is here. If you want to download applications, you can do that within the app store you know, icon here. So you can download apps if you want to. That's another option you have here too. Finally, within the settings application, there are tons and tons of things here. So this is a very important application. If you're ever looking for a certain specific setting, you can actually swipe down from the bottom right here and you can see this little search bar. Just tap in the search bar and you can search for settings like Wi-Fi or Bluetooth or update or whatever the case is. And you'll basically be able to find that information there. This is a panel that shows all your iCloud settings. So you can click here and see all the little iCloud settings you have enabled or disabled. Right here, you have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. You can kind of configure those. You can also scroll down and see your notifications, sounds and haptics, focus and screen time. Right here, you have this little general option, which is very important. This is where I spend a lot of time at. So here, if you click on about, you'll see a lot of information about your iPhone. So you'll see how much storage you have left, the software version you're on, so many other things. So just go through here and just kind of understand if you ever have any questions of what type of iPhone you have, you'll find it here. Software update is something I'd recommend every single iPhone user to do, especially for the 15s. Update your iPhone and keep it up to date as long as you can. You might as well download or just keep on automatic updates for at least iOS 17. So keep your iPhone up to date. That's another very, very important thing I'd recommend doing. 
You have a lot of other options here where you can kind of configure airdrop and so many other things across the board. Now hopping out, you'll have control center if you want to you know, enable your control center. The action button is the action of the new button that you have here. So if you want to, you can enable this action button to have and basically turn on anything. So if you want to you know, turn on silent mode, you can just click this button to enable or disable silent mode. And you can hold for a ring if you want to. But if you want to enable silent mode, just click here and you'll then be on silent mode, which is right there. So you have that type of capability. You can change it to anything. If you want to enable the camera, if you want to hold to open the camera, hold here and then we'll go and open the camera. So you can configure it to really anything, especially with that little accessibility or the, uh, the shortcut application. So you can kind of configure it there, which is really, really cool. Now accessibility wallpaper standby is a new mode within iOS 17. So you can configure that again. It's a really cool thing. And there's just so many different options here. I'd recommend every single iPhone 15 pro owner to go through and kind of understand the specific panel. So that is basically it. As of this point, you should have a decent understanding about how to use your iPhone 15 pro. It's a pretty basic iPhone to use, but that's essentially what you're working with. If you have any other thoughts or questions, let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, that would mean so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out. So long.